Welcome everybody and thank you so much for joining me one more time on my channel and thank you again for all the new subscribers. I am growing and thank you, thank you. My, my words cannot relate to you how appreciative I am of you all. Anyway, uh, don't forget to smash that like button and uh, if you're not uh, a subscriber, consider subscribing by the end of the video. All right. Today, I figured, well, listen, let's take a little deviation from our usual subject, and there's going to be plenty of time for these. Um, I wanted to share with you something today, which, as you know, is one more of my passions. So let's get this out of the way, and let me show you what I am talking about. As you all know, I do like my pocket knives and I collect vintage folding pocket knives. So today I'm going to show you one of my favorite patterns, which is a Texas toothpick. And uh, the reason these are called Texas toothpicks, I guess, is because perhaps in the old days, cowboys used to like to pick their tooth as with us. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, it's a very conf uh, you know, convenient slip joint knife. It's not a locking knife uh, pattern. And they all pretty much look like this. There is a slight variation. As you can see, there are large pattern toothpicks, medium sized ones, and sometimes you can even go to small. Okay, like this case XX. This is one of my favorites. This is the Boy Scout edition. Take a look at this little beauty. Wow. Mirror polished blade, and it does say Boy Scouts of America on it. Uh, let's see, what year is this? 2000. Oh, I gotta get my glasses on. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe 2003? 2004? All right. Anyway, so whenever you see a knife like this, like this fine example, which is uh, from Bear and Son. Actually, this is Bear MGC, but this is a Bear and Son brand. Blued steel. Look at this beauty. Wow. Smooth bone. and a very nice little snap. Look at that steel, wow. I wish my camera was a little bit better. Well, let's check this closing snap. Whoa! <laughs> this is an older one. I forget what brand this is. Let's see, it looks like it's a used blade and it is a, I gotta get my glasses. I cannot make out the name right now, but it's not an expensive knife. Uh, it could be an Imperial Knife Company or perhaps a Kent. I would have to take out my magnifying glass. This one I know is a Parker. This is the Japanese knife. And again, it is very well made. You can tell there's similar patterns, although there are slight differences. Okay, and it all depends on the brand. So this Parker is also quite beautiful. Wide bone handles. Little specks on the back. We're gonna wipe those fingerprints off the mirror polished blade. Let's leave this one just like that. It's pretty. All right. And you know, there are some that are not expensive nice knives. Uh, this is a German Hoffritz. Um, I, I, I apologize, Herberts. There is a Hoffritz, but this is a Herberts. Uh, German knife, never used, probably from the 70s. Uh, nice snap on it. Um, what else can we do here? Well, let me show you something that is not quite apparent from the very first look. and. It's this particular knife. 
even though you can see that the pattern is very, very much similar to a toothpick, this is a fish knife. And the way you can tell this is a fish knife, sometimes they will have a fish badge, but we will have the regular blade, and a lot of the times you'll have a secondary blade with a scaler, a beer can opener, or a bottle opener, sorry, and a hook remover. Okay, this is not a sharp blade, but it is enough to scale small trout and the likes of those. This is from Colonial, another, um, you know, mass US manufacturer. Uh, not known for high-end knives, but then again, this little beauty from the 70s or late 60s. I love it. Look at it. Fake wood and everything. Look at that plastic handle. All right. Let, let's see something else. Some of my uh, most favorite are knives that are pre-1970s. And this is a little hammer, and you can tell that it's been used. It is sharp as a dickens and very easy to cut yourself on these uh, carbon steel blades. These are just amazing blades. Um, let me see, let me see. Yep, sure enough. Sure enough, pretty sharp. And look at the celluloid handles, look at that. Very pretty. And a medium size, well actually this is a between a medium and a small, which is kind of an odd size. And this is an old Winchester toothpick, also one blade. And I found this one at a, what is it called, a second hand shop? A pawn, not a pawn shop, but it's kind of like a thrift store. Yeah, a thrift store. I came in and I asked the guy, I said, yeah, you know, I'm not really looking for anything, uh, but I, if you have any pocket knives or knives, I would love to take a look at them. And the guy goes, yeah, but I got just one. And he shows this thing to me and I ask him how much. He goes, a dollar. Yeah, so I got it. So, yep, that's it. And we already saw that little beautiful case XX. And again, I, I think this thing is just awesome. Look at that mirror polished blade and that that thin blade can really get into places if you really need something razor sharp and something that will perform precision work. There you go, there's that. And let's take a look at some more knives from the 70s. Uh, this is a hammer brand. This is a hammer brand with a cheap plastic handle, but it is in very good shape and I don't believe this one has been used. The blade is darkened uh, because it is a carbon steel blade, I believe, and that's that. Now, knives from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, even before, I mean, even 40s and 30s, they have beautiful colors in their handles. And this is just a thin film of uh, celluloid, and uh, it's amazing that some of these are actually still preserved to this day because if a little bit of oil gets on it and it sits there any other petroleum products some other chemicals even water obviously water will make it rust but these things deteriorate I mean these are the first things to go but look at this look at the beauty in this it's almost like a stained glass window isn't it how gorgeous is that I should just make a short covering just a celluloid pattern knives. Uh, this, whenever you see an abstract of colors and shapes in a handle, this would, and, and they're bright usually, uh, those are called end of day patterns. So whenever you see a colorful pattern like this, it's called an end of day pattern celluloid handle. Here's another beauty. Again, celluloid is perfect. It's kind of a marbled steel look. It's got a couple of red streaks in it. Let me bring it closer so perhaps you guys can see a little bit better. Some streaking in there. How gorgeous is that? 
And again, these are marvelously well preserved. All of these have been found at garage sales, yard sales. A few of them have been bought on eBay and uh, off of Craigslist, whatever I can find them, but not so many. Most of them are found at garage sales, yard sales, estate liquidations, that kind of stuff. Uh, none of these knives, I don't believe I've paid more than $3 for. Uh, with one exception. This Baron Sounds I bought retail, uh, which was, I think it was a $50 knife. But uh, the rest of them are garage sale finds. Look at another end of day pattern. This one is kind of an orange green, almost Christmassy color. And let's see, what is the brand on this one? Hammer, Hammer brand. Alrighty. Look at that. There's a tiny little piece of cellulite, cellulose, I mean. Yep, these things go, but I will try to make sure that they stick around. Look at that. How pretty is that? Again, this, this is just amazing. The golds, the coppers, the black, amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff. I love it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little presentation. And here's another example of not quite a toothpick. This is a fish knife from Imperial. And you got the bottle opener and you got a scaler. There is no hook remover on this one. Woo, but this little sucker is very sharp. I just think this is gorgeous. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, let me know what pattern would you like me to cover next. I do have a bunch and uh, all it takes for me is to separate them into clusters and put them up in a video. Don't forget to push the like button. It helps me show this message to other people. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day and remember kids, knives do not cut fingers. Pocket knife collectors cut fingers. Bye.